lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. This is a young adult novel and a coming-of-age story about Cameron, who is a gay teenager in the 1990s in rural Montana, where it is definitely not socially acceptable to be gay. This book reads more like adult literary fiction, like it doesn't have a typical why a feel to this even though it definitely is following a teenager and um is appropriate for teenagers to read actually really like the writing style in here it's so descriptive and it makes everything feel so real and cameron as a narrator is very frank about what's happening and what she's feeling and we definitely get inside her brain and how she's processing things. Um, and she's not a foolish young girl. This book doesn't really hold back either about what it's like to be a teenager. I love this book for that reason, but it's also a book that I could see being harder to read, especially if you are used to reading typical young adult no novels that don't get that descriptive and don't have that much like depth to them if that makes sense. Moving on to the plot. Um, this book takes place starting in 1989 and goes through I think 1993 as Cameron starts growing up. And we meet Cameron as she's having her first kind of love affair with her best friend Irene. The two girls are about 12 at the time and so it's not very like serious. Um, they've known each other for forever and Cameron is definitely like in love with Irene but what they're physically doing isn't that advanced like they're mostly just kissing um but it's really pulling on Cameron's like heart and she feels very guilty about this um and so when her parents end up dying that summer Cameron's first thought is relief because they will never find out that she's been kissing a girl. So there's also a lot of guilt that Cameron's dealing with in this book. So Cameron's aunt Ruth comes to live with her and raise her and her grandmother also. So the aunt is incredibly conservative, definitely openly uh, Christian, trying to look proper, do what's right. And the grandmother just has old fashioned views because she's, you know, older. Um, I definitely love the grandmother more than the aunt. Like, the aunt super got on my nerves in more than a few instances in this book. And the grandmother is just wonderful and perfect. And I love her terribly. And then the book skips ahead a few years until um, when Cameron's older and more mature and she starts, like, having more serious relationships. So as we see Cameron when she's older, we find out that her life hasn't been easy and that she doesn't necessarily get along well with her aunt and she's definitely not forthcoming. Um, so Cameron's got a few secrets, not only the fact that she likes girls, but also that she's been shoplifting and generally stealing from people and places. And she's also been smoking marijuana and breaking into this old abandoned hospital. Cameron is in love with her best friend Cooley this cowgirl who works on her family's ranch and is absolutely gorgeous and popular and it's just not like the closer Cameron gets to her the more she thinks maybe something might happen but at the same time Cooley's got a boyfriend um so I really liked the two of them and their relationship developing without trying to share what actually ends up happening. Cameron does eventually end up getting caught and her aunt finds out that Cameron is gay and so she sends her to this conversion camp. It's actually a boarding school. Um, and Cameron is stuck in the school with a bunch of other um, teens who are struggling with homosexuality and trying to teach them that it's not what God wants and definitely the guilt get, gets laid on thick. A lot of the really conservative ideology in this book that Cameron has to live with, with the people around her, really made me super angry. Especially everybody who's just trying to teach her to just hate who she is, um, thinking that she can change, and that really sucks. 
Um, so this isn't an easy book to read either, but there's definitely a ton of, ton of emotions um, from when Cameron's young and when she's has these moments where she's falling in love and just feeling that and the way it's described is awesome. And when she meets a few people that she can really trust and depend on. Um, and even just her day-to-day -day life and like the experiences she has and what it's like to be a teenager. I also just love the overall look at what life is like in that time and that place. Um, some of this is nostalgia. I personally am a few years younger than Cameron is, but I still definitely remember some of the things that like what it was like growing up in the 90s. So I appreciate this book for that fact. And um, like the cultural stuff. Um, and it definitely ta paints a picture of what it's like to struggle with this um, at a time when it definitely wasn't commonplace or talked about much and definitely wasn't accepted. So I enjoyed this book a lot, in case you can't tell. Um, and the way it's written is wonderful. And I just didn't want the end, I just didn't want the book to end because I've definitely grown attached to her as a character reading this book. On the whole, I gave this four out of five stars. It's amazing, especially the writing is freaking awesome. Um, so if you are looking for a young adult LGBT book, this is definitely an awesome one to pick up. So I totally recommend it. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have read this book or what other why LGBT books have you loved and read? Um, leave those down in the comments below. Yeah. Peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.